All right, so welcome everyone. If this is your first time joining, I am Sarah Powell. I'm the founder of Impactory and we offer equal luxury wellness retreats to women executives who are seeking more purpose and less stress at work. And we also host virtual events like this where we bring insights to you that can truly change your life for free thanks to our incredible coaching partners like Claire today. Um, and for the next hour, first, I'm going to share a little bit about my story related to the topic. Then Claire is going to teach you how to really better understand what it feels like to be in alignment with your values, as well as what holds us back from living in integrity with what we truly value. So before we jump into the event, like always, I just want to take a moment to get present. So you can close your eyes for this if you want and take a deep breath in, long breath out, letting go of whatever was going on before this session, not worrying about whatever is happening after. And you can continue to take a few breaths in and out at your own pace. And really just feel the tension in your body melting away. You can relax your jaw, your shoulders, and just feel the weight of your body your physical presence in this moment. Okay, thank you for getting present with me. You can open your eyes now if you have them closed. All right, so thank you so much for including Impactory on your journey towards living a life with more purpose and ease, and also for investing an hour of your time into learning about slowing down to speed up. This is a topic very near and dear to my heart. Um, I had to learn this lesson the hard way, unfortunately. So hopefully for those of you who are attending, you can uh, preempt some of these things. So for me, prior to Impactory, I was a consultant at Accenture. Um, I was also a chief operating officer, and I'm a co-founder of a clean water social enterprise in Ethiopia. I'm a very high achieving, motivated person, um, but for most of my life, I was just so caught up in doing everything that I didn't realize that I was living in a chronic state of stress. Like my stress had just become completely normalized, and I kept pushing myself, even when I didn't want to do things because I felt guilty or like I didn't have a choice or it was something I should do. Um, and this constant pressure and stress that I was putting on myself, it just was not sustainable. Um, and finally, my health rapidly declined where I ended up having issues with my thyroid. I had uncontrollable weight loss, depression, anxiety, all of these things to the point where eventually I wasn't able to work. And for me, this was my wake up call. Like I was saying, I hope that uh, some of you don't have to get to that point, but I know a lot of us got to touch the hot stove before we learn the lesson. Um, and so when I had this moment, I started getting curious about how did I get to this place? Like I'm a very healthy person. I was very curious about meditation, which I cannot recommend this enough. I say this on every, every event, um, but through my meditation practice and journaling and also seeing a therapist, I realized that I was hustling for my worthiness. All those things that I was doing, I was really seeking validation and love externally. And this realization really changed my life because with this newfound awareness, I was finally empowered to make a change. Like I'm a firm believer without awareness, you're not going to have any self-development. Um, and like I said, up until the last few years, I was really living in this, um, I was living in this chronic state of stress, but now I know that my accomplishments are not equal to my self-worth. I do a lot less and I'm able to stay connected to my body, listen and trust my inner voice. 
And to get here has been a journey, <laughs> quite the journey. Um, and of course, it still continues, the, the work never ends. Um, but this way of living more in alignment with my values, it's really led me to do work like in factory and really have confidence to really go after my dreams and also be surrounded by people who share these values like Claire. Um, and as I mentioned, this is a topic that I care about deeply and I know affects so many of us. And that's why I'm super excited to be partnering with Claire today. So she's also really struggled with people pleasing, you know, not feeling fulfilled like so many of us, but ultimately she also found the courage to really step out of her comfort zone and start her own business. So she is a professional executive coach. Um, her business is called Reaching My Best, and she helps her clients really build the confidence to find balance and fulfillment and purpose in their lives. So she is also going to help you do some of that today. So I'm going to hand it off to Claire, and then I'll come back at the end with a couple of opportunities if you're interested in continuing this work. Thank you. And thank you very much for having me. I'm absolutely delighted to be here. Um, I was going to start with a tiny little mindfulness um, uh, session, but we will, um, I have another one planned for later. So um, I just want, before we start, just to have a think when you were doing that mindfulness moment just now, what the quality of uh, your mind was when you were doing that. Um, what was it like to have no thoughts running through your head and put a bit of space between you and the day that you've had? Because that's the beauty of mindfulness is giving us that space. Um, thank you, Heather, who's saying that it felt awesome. So um, I completely agree. The quality of your mind when you you do some mindfulness is really the key to this concept of slowing down to speed up. Because when those thoughts aren't there and they're not influenced by any limiting beliefs that we have, we really have the power to do anything that we want. And that's really goes to the heart of what I'm going to be talking about to you today. So um, if we go on to the next slide, um, just make sure that you give this session to you. You've turned up. Um, make sure it is a gift to you. and Put your phone on silent and just be as present as you can with this session for the next hour. And I promise that you'll get benefit from doing that. Uh, we will be using a tool called uh, Mentimeter uh, quite soon in the presentation. So if you want to use your phone for that, or you can use your browser, um, you can just put up the site uh, menti.com, or you can click on the link that Sarah's just put in the chat as well. And that will take you straight to the slide uh, when we're ready for it. Um, so if we could go to the next slide. I just want to, to start by telling you what it was like for me living this life um, of going so fast that um, I just the weeks would pass um, and but I was finding it very very stressful I'm a really hyper efficient person and like Sarah I'm a hyper achiever as well so I would start the day at 8 a.m with a big fluster and flurry of work and productivity but already by 8.15, I was having to go and get my, for me, it would be a cup of tea. I'm a, a new coffee drinker, um, but be, be going for some caffeine and then straight back to my desk to the to tackle the, the to-do list, um, looking for the tasks that were easiest to do, quickest to do, to get that sort of sense of fulfillment. And then already by nine o'clock, I would have accomplished so much. I would feel exhausted and depleted. And there's only so long that you can carry on with this sort of rhythm without it having some sort of impact on you. Um, let me go to the next slide, which I think is the, the one about how does it make you feel when you're going around doing way too much? So if you either click on the link um, in the chat or you go to menti.com and put in the code 7238, 9433. 
I'm just going to um, share my screen and whatever words you put in about how you feel in that moment when you're having too much to do, the words that you feel in that moment will appear as a word cloud on the screen. And I just think it's really interesting to just reflect on how it makes us feel and what the impact is. And we all um, experience life and situations in different ways. So for some reason, when I go to it, it's not taking me to this page. It's just the girl. Is the there. code still the same or has it changed the code? Because sometimes it changes the code. Is it seven? still seven? Yeah, it's that one. Is anyone else having, am I the only one? <laughs> Maybe it's um, If you scroll, then you will see the question below. Oh, okay. Just me, user error, ignore. <laughs> Here we go. There's some words already. So feel like you're failing, overwhelmed, chicken with a head cut off. That's one of my favorite visual visualizations. Whoever put that. Um, yeah, the when the to-do list is is building, it makes you feel very depleted because um, there's just so much to get through. Exhausted, lost, tired, not enough. Um, the biggest words are the words that the most people have put in there. So overwhelmed and stressed are the biggest two there so I think you can you can see just from that list of words that they're all pretty heavy negative words um, and feeling any of those things is not going to be nice for anybody so um, I'll stop sharing my screen so thank you thank you for doing that it just helps make the um, the presentation a little bit more interactive. And I just think it's, as I said, it's really interesting to take a moment to, to reflect on how it makes us feel when we are going too fast. Can we go on to the, the next slide? Um, but don't do the build just yet, if that's okay. So um, I was in this cycle of doing way too much and I noticed after a period of time that I was on actually on a six-week cycle I would get more and more wound up and frustrated over time um, I would um, start to notice the physical manifestations of that in, in my body so for me that would be a clenched jaw tight shoulders sometimes it would be RSI in my arm uh, repetitive stress um, Sometimes it would be that a cold sore would appear. And these were all ways of my body screaming out to me that I was feeling stressed and anxious. And in conjunction with that, obviously, there's all my emotions that would be going alongside that as well. So I was short with my husband and my children and snappy with my colleagues. And believe me, everybody was wrong, not me. And it was all about everybody else. And I just, I realized at a certain point in time that this was just not healthy for me and I could not carry on living life like this. And I asked myself, what was I believing about myself in that moment? And I did a lot of exploration into what I was believing about myself. But have a think for yourself when you're in that situation, what are you believing about yourself that is getting you caught up and stress and anxious from doing way too much? I was believing that I needed to achieve and that my acceptance was related to how much I could achieve. I was believing that um, doing something and completing some, something meant that I was in the right, that I was proving myself to everybody else. Um, and it felt like completely the wrong energy when I look back um, at it. And what happens when we're in this state of continual doing is that our cortisol levels um, spike 
and they get used to being at really elevated levels. And that gives, it just creates constant stress and anxiety in our bodies, which is absolutely terrible for our health. And ultimately does um, impact our, not only our health span, but our lifespan as well. So I realized that I was getting burnt out and that this wasn't healthy for me. So I asked myself, what can I do to change? What would it be like if I didn't have to go around carrying on doing these things? What would what would a life of fulfillment, of happiness be like? And how would I live that life? And that was a really interesting journey that I went on to do that. Um, I went on a I started by taking up um, meditation. Thanks to my employer at the time, we had access to a really good um, meditation app, mindfulness app, and I started a regular practice. And that allowed me to just, for even though it was just a few minutes each day, be really utterly present with that moment. It allowed my awareness to come uh, to be greater and visible to me. And that meant that I was able to really pause and be in the moment when I was feeling stress and then to start asking myself these questions about what am I believing about myself? And it gave me the space to choose what my response could be in to a particular situation. And I really consolidated this practice uh, at the back end of last year when I went on a 10 day Vipassana, which is a meditation retreat. It's a type of meditation where um, you don't speak for 10 days and you just fully practice um, mindfulness. And I know that that's not something that will be suitable for everybody and feels very overwhelming and alarming for lots of people that you would not be able to speak to anybody for 10 days. But what it allowed me to do was to go fully into my being and into a place where my thoughts were just thoughts that came and they went. And it allowed me to be really present with myself and to access a part of me deep within the part of me that um, allows me to find a space where I can identify things that really light me up. And um. What I realized is that when you are in that place and you um, you just are and you can feel deeply is that you become really, really efficient and productive. So when I left the retreat, um, some of my friends said to me, well, what's it going to be like when you go back into the real world? Isn't that going to be like way too overwhelming? And what I actually experienced was getting back into the the real world, if you like, was that I had this protective layer around me where the craziness and the busyness of life just bounced off me. And only the things that were really important to me and that really mattered um, to my soul, if you like, to my being, to my essence, to who I really am, they're the only things that stuck. So what that gave me then was a focus on how to be in my everyday life. Now, I'm not saying that that's something that stays there all the time. It's something that I need to continuously work on, but it was a very, very interesting experience. And I was on fire for two weeks when I came um, out of that um, that retreat experience. When I say on fire, I mean, I was just, I'm productive anyway, but I was, those jobs were just getting done. They were just flying off and I was not feeling any stress or anxiety with them at all. And what that really highlighted to me was that how out of balance my life had been up until that point. Um, If you just want to put the build on for me. um, So I've used this, um, the symbol of yin and yang, which you probably will will recognize there, um, because I think it's a really beautiful representation of getting this balance between being and doing in life. And when we get that balance right and we can strike it, strike that strike it in a perfect harmony that is right for us, my balance is going to be very different to yours. That is when we really feel like we're living a fulfilled, 
happy life that is free from stress and anxiety. That is when we can really find the power of slowing down to speed up. Um, if we could go on to the uh, next slide. And what I also understood from all of the mindfulness practice that I have done is previously um, I had thought that when you hear that um, or have an experience of being somewhere on autopilot. So take the example of um, you're driving the kids to school and you don't know how you got there. Like five roads have just disappeared and suddenly you're there and you're like, how did I get from A to B without even having an accident? It's because that activity has become so familiar to you. Your, your brain has wired yourself to on an unconscious or subconscious level to know how to get you there and to still keep you safe. So that's your your actions being on autopilot. And I'm sure that you've all experienced being on autopilot uh, at some point in your life. But what I hadn't realized was that our thoughts and our emotions and our feelings can also be on autopilot. So what does that actually mean? That means that when we experience um, a a behavior or an action or something that happens around us we go through the same process of thinking feeling and um, our emotions without even knowing it so if somebody honks their horn at you once and it's made you really stressed and your heart rate's gone you can feel in your throat and your everything's clenching and your palms are maybe going sweaty if that's a really traumatic experience for you the next time that that happens, your body will respond in exactly the same way. And that's because our brains are neuroplastic. And every time we have an experience, those neural pathways are reinforced again and again. So when you go through life wanting to um, not disappoint people and um, achieve, for example, you are behaving in a certain way that um, has always been that way because your neural pathway is dictating it to you. And the only way that you can change this is to, is to stop the pattern and to choose a different response. And that's what, where the power of something like mindfulness comes. So, if you're wondering what on earth this image is on the screen, it's actually the image of an iceberg. So, and it's a really useful image because um, the top of the iceberg is your conscious mind. Um, so those that's everything that you're aware of happening around you. And then underneath the sea level, we have our subconscious mind and our unconscious mind. And generally speaking, we, and this might be alarming to some of you, some of you may know this, our conscious mind is only responsible for 5% of what we do on a daily basis. And I know that I found that quite staggering when I found it out. So that means that our brain has been trained for 95% of what we, uh, what we do to be in our subconscious or unconscious minds. So in order for us to slow down, to speed up, we need to have more of the conscious mind, the tip of the iceberg that is visible to us um, available and so that we can actually see it. And activities like mindfulness and being aware of your limiting beliefs helps bring that water level down so that you can see and be more aware of what's going on around you. Um, can we go on to the next slide? Yeah. So another concept I would like to introduce to you is, um, is this pyramid of actions to values. And what I really like about it is that it, um, it helps you understand um, about living in alignment with your values. So if we start at the, at the top of the triangle, just to explain it. So we've been talking about our actions and our behaviors those are generally the things that we're um, 
we are aware of doing. We're conscious of our actions and behaviours most of the time, unless like we're on autopilot driving to the kids to school. And those actions and behaviours are driven by our thoughts. So we think think something like, um, I am hungry, and then we go to the cupboard and we get out a biscuit. And our, um, our thoughts are driven by our feelings. This is when it starts to, we start to get into our subconscious and our unconscious mind. So that feeling of I am hungry, it might not be driven by the fact that your stomach is rumbling. It might actually be triggered by the fact that you have a feeling that you might be feeling sad or lonely, for example. So that feeling of sad and loneliness um, triggers you to think you are hungry and then you will go and you will get something to eat. But underneath those feelings are values that you have. And our values are driven by the lessons that we've learned in life, the way we've been brought up, the way we've been educated, the customs and the beliefs uh, um, that we have in the country we live in, our faith, our religion. Um, some of it is even down to our personality. So there is nothing wrong with anyone's values, but our our values are ingrained within us. They drive our feelings. Our feelings drive our thoughts and our thoughts drive our actions and our behaviors. And what happens is, um, if you can just do the, a little bit of the build, is when we are living out of alignment with our values. So, for example, if we're doing something like we we say that we're going to do something, but we don't really want to do it. We're living out of alignment with our values and it feels icky. It feels wrong. But when we live in alignment with our values, it feels right. We're motivated to do it and it's easy to do it. So when we bring this concept into slowing down to speed up, all of the things that you um, need to do that feel icky and feel wrong in your gut are things that are probably out of alignment with who you are. And all of the things that you find easy to do and that feel really good and you feel happy and fulfilled when you do them, those are the things that are most likely to be in alignment with your values. And it's a really useful barometer of um, to, to help us decide whether we are going to do something or we, we choose to do it or we choose not to do it. Moving on to the next slide. Um, Sarah mentioned at the beginning about the Eisenhower matrix, which is a matrix that's been around for, for decades now. And we have two axes here, um, one for urgency and one for importance. And the basic premise is that if something, if you consider something to be urgent and important, you get on and you do it. And if something is non-urgent and not important, then you delete that as an activity and you don't do it and this is a really useful time management tool and it works very well but it is about doing things so what I would like to do is introduce a being element into the Eisenhower matrix so that's around alignment so going back to the pyramid that we just went through when you have a task to do or on your to-do list, if you also ask yourself the question, is this aligned with my values? Is this aligned with who I am and what is important to me? Then that's a really good way of making sure that not only are you classifying what you need to do to be, uh, whether it's urgent or not, but is it aligned or not? And that really goes back to what I was saying about the experience of coming out of my 10 day retreat was everything that I did after that retreat, I was aligned with and it was urgent or not urgent. 
And I was focusing very much on all of those things. The areas where I was not aligned, but they were still things that needed to be done. It was very easy to ask somebody else to to do them for me and to delegate them. And I'm somebody who can find it quite difficult to delegate tasks. But when you realize that you have a limited amount of time and something's not aligned to what your skill set is or what makes you happy, it's much easier to delegate it. So hopefully that gives you a really sort of clear understanding of, of the, the ways that you can slow down to speed up just using that as a simple tool. Um, so I want to do a, another mindful moment with you. It's um, a really nice time of day to have another a mindful moment. So just like uh, Sarah has said at the beginning, if we just sit really comfortably with our feet firmly on the ground and our spine nice and erect and self-supporting and just lower your gaze or close your eyes. And if you reconnect with your breath, just like we did in the first exercise, And slightly different, I would like you to bring to mind an activity that you feel a bit challenged by or you're finding difficult to do at the moment. Have a think about why you're doing it, the different steps that are involved how long it might take to do, who you're doing it for, just everything that there is to think about that task. And as you're doing that, just notice and observe the parts of your body that may be feeling any sensations as you think of that challenging task. They might be really subtle movements or sensations. It could be a slight clenching of your fist or your toes, a clenching of your teeth, tension in your neck or your shoulders. It could be a feeling in your tummy, a tightness in your chest. It could be your breath. So whatever it is, and we're all different, spend a moment being with that sensation, allowing it to be there, being curious about that sensation. Imagine yourself observing that sensation as if you are watching a movie of yourself in that sensation, if that makes any sense. And as you observe that sensation, notice what happens to it the longer that you observe it for. And what generally happens is that sensation starts to dissipate, to, to dissolve, to lessen and just observe the difference that you're feeling. And now spend a moment reimagining that task. Imagine that task was something that you wanted to do and that felt easy to do. Imagine yourself doing it in a way that was easy. It could be that you're asking for help. It could be that you're redefining it. Be creative in how you could complete this, ex this particular task in a way that feels easy and 
in it being easy that it makes you feel fulfilled and happy. And observe yourself doing that exercise, that activity, and notice how that feels in your body. And then spend a moment just reflecting on the difference between how you felt both of those tasks. And when you're ready, you can bring your attention back to your breath, back to your sitting bones, your feet on the floor. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And feel free to just share in the chat if you would like to, what you notice doing that as an exercise. And the benefit of doing, imagining and visualizing a different way of doing something is that your brain doesn't understand the difference between a real activity and an imagined one. So by imagining and visualizing that exercise from a place of ease and flow, you're actually creating a new neural pathway. And the more you imagine that, the stronger that neural pathway becomes. And then that new pattern of thought and experience and feeling becomes over time more dominant. I felt my body tightening at first, but then when I thought about it in a positive way, I felt supported. That's beautiful. Can we go on to the next slide, please? So that um, I hope is a really good example of how you can slow down to speed up and the benefit of doing so. That um, visualization exercise is one that you can take and repeat by yourself when you're feeling overwhelmed or that you're going too fast. Um, and I hope that you find that a really useful tool. Um, I wanted to share with you a five day challenge that I have, which gives you the gift of space and time to explore what lights you up from the inside um, and a way of doing that that um, really connects with you with who you are and who you want to be in the world. So it's five day, a five day challenge where you are emailed um, activities each day. A lot of them are supported by some mindfulness activities. It's a really gentle, nurturing five days um, that where you go really deep within to explore. And then at the end of the fifth day, you then put that into a concrete plan on how you can move forward in small steps so hopefully that's something that um, some of you will find interesting it's completely free to do the link is there you can um, use the um, QR code just to open the link to sign up for it it starts whenever you want it to start um, and you can go at your own pace as well so if you don't feel you have five days in a row you can just take your time to work your way through the emails as well and that's um that's it from me I'm happy to take any questions though as well yeah um can you go to the next slide Kate thanks so much Claire um I also just want to say to everyone you know change we gave you a lot of tools here to think about um, and change is not easy, but I just want to applaud you for coming to this event, for showing, you signed up for it, you showed up for it, you took the time. Um, that's really the first step. And, you know, you're already getting ready 
um, you're already going on the journey of creating a new reality for yourself. So just take the time to congratulate yourself on that. Cause honestly, that is most people don't even take that step. Um, and you know, if you're really wanting to operate from a place of self-awareness and really dig deeper into, um, you know, into the different concepts that Claire was talking about, and really operate from a place of self-awareness, the first thing you really need to do is relax and then you can tap into what's going on beneath the surface. If you are just go, 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 go in a state of stress um, all the time, then you're not gonna be able to really listen to what's going on in there. So one option you can do is, um, you know, your own pace, do the challenge that Claire just shared. Um, also, if you're interested, we have two different retreats that Impactory offers. Um, one is in Mallorca, one is in Nepal, and they really, can you go the next slide, Kate? Um, the different aspects are basically, like I said, we start with rest and relaxation, um, and we really focus on self-discovery and personal transformation. And you'll also get the chance to discover either Mallorca or Nepal, just incredible cultural immersion. And the landscape is absolutely incredible. You'll get the chance to connect with other inspiring women. Um, in the Nepal retreat, we also have an aspect of social impact, which is really incredible. We partner with local social entrepreneurs um, to do meaningful work. And after you know, making these changes in the, you know, like a sanctuary paradise of a retreat is one thing, but once you get home is a different story when you have all the, um, you know, different distractions of day to day. So to set you up for success, we also have executive coaching for you afterwards. And if you join the Myrica retreat, this is an example um, where we'd be staying in this absolutely incredible seaside villa. All the properties that we stay in for all the retreats are equal luxury and just an absolute dream. Um, can you go to the next slide? And here are some, uh, some other photos from the Myrica retreat, but basically, um, you know, I know that you all are very busy. So if this is something that you're curious about, you want to explore these topics um, in more detail, this is truly a life-changing opportunity for you where everything is truly taken care of, where you can just reflect and relax and have that support around you and finally get the clarity that you're looking for um, with the support of professional coaches along your side. So I mean, whatever your dream is, whatever change it is that you are wanting to make, I hope that you realize you are the key. Like no one has those unique gifts that you have. So I hope that you feel inspired to get out there and make those changes so you can really, you know, share those with others and, and change people's lives. So I would love for you guys to stay connected. Here's our contact information. Um, if you want to chat further, about you know career transition or if you have questions about the retreat, um, you can schedule a coffee chat on impactory.com and also share your wins. If you end up you know using the Eisenhower matrix or any of these things, um, please reach out. You can tag us on Instagram, on LinkedIn. And then um, also here is Claire's information as well. If you want to continue to stay connected with her, she also does um, in her business is executive coaching. So if you liked her style, then definitely reach out and thank you so much for, for attending the event and yeah, we'll hang around for a little bit. If anyone has any questions.